listening participants. <coughs> My name is Ganesh and uh, I'm going to be taking you through the session for the next two hours. Uh, hopefully my voice is audible in case you need to get in touch with me for uh, any doubts, any clarifications during the program, feel free to. Right? I believe there are a lot of options by which you can connect with me. There is a hand signal which is there present in your uh, Go webinar control panel which you can use to ask any questions. At the same point of time, your chat windows are very much available. Please feel free to chat any point of time to uh, connect and also ask any questions which you have. So, assuming that uh, all of you are able to hear whatever I am speaking, let me continue with the topic uh, which is time management. For today's topic, time management, before we even dive deep into the topic, it is very much important for us to understand why time management. Why is this crucial and why is it going to make a lot of difference in all of our lives? So let me give you an agenda of what is going to happen in the two hours, even though it's a short time, but a lot of things can be discussed uh, during these two hours. So the plan is going to be this. Uh, uh, the introduction bit is already over. Um, Boom has taken us through the intro of uh, what we do. And then I'm going to take you through certain aspects like planning, organizing, prioritizing, scheduling tools and tips, as well as controlling common time wasters. One of the critical elements, anything in life can be got back. Even the money which you spend, you can earn it back. If you don't have proper health, probably over a period of time, consistent efforts, you can get the health back. But one thing if you lose, which you will never get back in your life, is going to be time. At every single second, every single moment which is passed by is something which you can never recollect or get back in your life. So that is why it is becoming a crucial element for us to understand what this time is and how we can utilize it in part of our life. So when we look at this time, let's do a small calculation and try to understand how this time works or how much time do we have in our lives to achieve the goals and dreams which we have, right? So, if you go through the statistics and then see what is the average age by which an Indian lives, right? Average age by which an Indian lives. Um, you guys are aware, can you, any of you chat and let me know what is the average age of an Indian by which he lives? What is the average age an Indian lives? If you can just type it in your chat or in case you're not able to type it, just discuss with your friends. Okay, so there are different answers which is come in. People are saying 70, 75, 60, 65, okay. Okay. So, yes, the right age or the average age what an Indian lives is uh, 60 to 65, right? That's the average age which are given. So, uh, we can go with different statistics. For this uh, particular uh, program, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to ask you to take 60 as the average age by which an Indian lives, right? So, all of you are college students, you're about to finish your college or finish about your MBA, uh, Master of Business Administration or your engineering and you're going to go out to the real world and start living your life and um, I know you're having a lot of enthusiasm to go and reach all your goals in your life. Now, let's do an example. I'm going to take the average age of all of your students as to be 20, 25. So, if the average age by which an Indian lives is 60 and your age is 25, which means you have another 35 years left for you to go and achieve all your dreams and goals in your life. So some of you might think that 35 is good enough, sir. What's the problem? I think I have enough time in my life. I don't need to worry about it. 35 years is actually too much, sir. I need to do probably something about it. So let's do some more calculations and then try to understand a little bit more. Uh, Yes, Harry, you can just type in your question through the chat window, I will take it. Uh, so, some of you might have, yes, uh, okay, I got your the answers, yes. 
So now some of you might think 35 is high, some of you might think 35 is too less, but let's get to further calculation and see. Now most of the students I believe every single day you have you go to sleep and I think you sleep on an average uh, close to 8 hours. So some of you might be shouting there saying that no, so it's not 8 hours, it's 6 hours, 5 hours. I'm taking into consideration the sleep which you have on the entire Saturday and Sundays also, right? So if you do that, on an average you sleep for about 8 hours every single day. Now 8 hours is one third of 24, right? So out of the 35 years which you have, then I have to subtract your sleeping time. So one third of 35 is somewhere going to be around um, 11 point something. So I'm going to minus off another 12 years. 12 years of your life which you have left, you're going to spend in sleeping basically, right? So if you subtract that, you have another 23 years to live your dreams and goals. Right? All of you, I, you, I believe, have dreams like buying cars, buying houses, taking care of your parents, getting married, right? Um, helping your kids with their education, etc. For all of that, you have now 23 years. Right? So again, I can see some of you might say that, yes, it's enough. 23 is more than enough. Some of you might say 23 is not enough. Right? We have not finished with the calculations. Let me do some more. No. Out of the time which is left, we need to look at only the most productive hour because the times which you're not spending at office, the time which you're not spending at productive work will not yield results for you. So if you have to look at only the productive hours which is left out of it, if you do take away your Saturdays and Sundays and you extrapolate it, it comes to another seven years of your life, close to, right? So I'm removing off those another seven years which is not going to be very productive. I'm not saying um, you will not, uh, this is a time in which is not going to be spent at office or any particular work. So if you subtract off that another seven, what is the answer? I hope you guys are good at calculation. So if you have minus of 23 and seven, you get another 16 years left in your life to achieve all your dreams and goals. Now again a question, is it enough? We've not finished the calculation yet. Let's go a little more further down. Out of the 16, now, do you know what is the average time an Indian spends in travel? I'm going to give some special chocolates to Harihara Gopalan, right? He's the one who's chatting me a lot. Very good, Hari, keep it up. So now, so if you can answer this question, what is the average uh, age or number of years, sorry, an Indian travels in his lifetime. Again, some more answers. Uh, when I say time travel, it seems how much time every single day a person travels. Probably two hours, three hours. And then if I extrapolate this two hours every single day for the rest of your life, what will happen? So it's going to be somewhere close to seven years of your lifetime. An average Indian travels almost seven years of his life. I'm talking about everyday travel. Now if your college is very far away, you have to add a little bit more years to your travel time. But assuming you go by the average, which means seven years is spent only in traveling. Probably you can finish off three MBA degrees during that period of time. And if you have arrears also, you can clear it in one more year, right? So in seven years, you will be able to complete three MBA degrees. You know, that's the average. Now, if I have to subtract that, so we, where were we? I think we were at 16 years, right? So 16 minus another seven years, which you're going to spend off and travel, which means you have nine years left to achieve all your dreams and goals. Now, out of this nine, I know about all of them, but I think some of you might have the bad habit of uh, brushing your teeth in the morning, taking a bath, right, all those. So if you have, have these habits and you have this food, right, you take in foods uh, three times a day at least, so for all of this, if you have to calculate a time and then subtract, probably I will minus off another four years for the rest of your life, which means 
What's the balance number? Yes. Five years. No. Five years is what you have for the rest of your life. I'm talking about productive time. Right? Yes, there are more number of years definitely. But productive years, on an average, you have five years. Now, this is the bad news. But there is another side of it. There is also a good news. The good news is that all those people who have achieved great things in their life have done it in the same five years. You can do two things. One is be very productive, manage your time very, very effectively, and use these five years effectively to the best optimal use possible. The second option, be healthy, take good food, do proper exercises, and extend your lifetime. So both these options are available, but just by going with the statistics of five years, now you understand that every single day, every single hour becomes very, very crucial for us to manage it very effectively so that we can achieve all our goals and dreams at very young age and also feel very happy and proud about it. If you do not notice this time and you just while away, think that what is that today I might relax, tomorrow I will relax or next month I will take care of things. A time will come you might probably be at your 30, 35 and most productive time of your life has already passed by and thereby achieving of your goals and dreams might become a little challenge. So I just want you to be aware and understand how important is time management not only in a professional person's life but in every single person's individual life as well. Right? With that, let's move on to the first step of time management. You need to plan. Without planning, time management is something which will never happen. Let's take this scenario. Your father or mother gives you some pocket money, right? It might vary from hundreds to thousands. Let's assume they're giving you a thousand bucks and then you have it or and then you start spending it. You have it in your pocket, you just keep going around, you uh, visit uh, the bazaar with all of your friends and you spend that money. Now probably at the end of the day or in a couple of days this thousand bucks is gone and you go back to your mother or father and then again start asking for another thousand bucks. And they ask you where did you spend your money? Probably you do not have a clue of where this money has gone. Yes, you might be able to remember the money which is spent on, which is big things like 500, 600, but the smaller ones, the 10 rupees or the 15 rupees, you might not even be able to recollect or remember where this money has gone. The same is with time. You just go out there if you do not have a plan and you just go around spending it, over a period of time you will not know where your time has gone. It looks as though there are 15 days for the exam, there is enough time to study. And then why to care about it today? Right? You while away some more time, spend time with family, friends, whatever, going out, and then suddenly it becomes five days. And you say there are five more days. Why should I worry about it right now? And then comes a time when the exam is tomorrow, you can't just believe where the time has gone. Right? There were fifteen days of holidays which was there. It looked very long, but suddenly the exam has come, tomorrow's exam, you're off stuck, you're not able to accept the fact and then you start rushing into study. So all of it boils down to planning basically. If you do not plan your time, then basically time is controlling you. You have no control over what is happening. So when I say planning, there are various steps to it. We're gonna see one of the various steps. I hope all of you have a pen and paper and you're noting down what's happening. Is it so? Okay, so I believe all of you are having a pen and paper, some of you are noting it. In case you do not have, you have super memory. I really appreciate it. <coughs> but what I also request you is when I give you some activities, I, uh, I want you to discuss it with your friends over there, right? The next one, one and a half hour which is left, I want you to fully focus here and then give your time and effort effectively. So there's two hours which we spend on time management is not getting wasted, yes? So let's go through the process. There are uh, five stages in planning, right? How to get the most out of your time. 
the first and foremost is identifying your goals. You need to exactly know what is your goal in life. What is that you want to achieve in your life? Because each person's priority, each person's plan, each person's goal is absolutely different from the other person. If you go to an organization, the organization will have a goal for you. The organization will expect certain uh, you to achieve certain objectives. So it again varies from person to person in the organization based on the roles which are going to be. A marketing person and a finance person will have different goals and objectives. So similarly, as a personal on a personal front, you have different goals and objectives. Now, if you have clear understanding of what is your goal, then it's much easier to plan your time accordingly. So first and foremost, uh, if you ask me what is a goal, sir, how to set a goal, then I will have to take another two-hour session for you separately. We'll do it on a different bridge. Now, right now, I'm going to ask you to probably take a minute and then uh, if you have notebooks and pens, write it down. If you do not have that, I want to pair up with the person sitting next to you. Don't fight which person, probably the person on your right. You will pair up with him and then discuss top three goals for you for this year. It can be you want to get a job, you want to buy, get a bike, whatever it is which is there. Or you want to finish your project, whatever is the goal which you have or you want to enhance your studies or get yourself equipped to get a particular job, whatever is the goal which you have, just discuss with the person next to you your top three goals. Once you're done, if you can just give, let me know through the chat window, I will proceed to the next step. Okay, I think by now you would have discussed your top three goals. So take these top three goals right now and of these top three goals which you have, I want you to pick up one top goal right now. Of the three goals which you have, pick up one goal for yourself, it could be anything which you want. After you picked up that particular goal, I want you to break that goal into manageable tasks. What is a manageable task? Let's say I'm talking about getting a job in a particular company. So what are the various tasks that particular um, goal ha would have? Probably one is to understand which uh, companies are the ones which is suitable for me. Secondly, out of the various companies which is out there, which uh, job would I prefer for that? Right? What is the designation will I get? Once I understand what is the designation, what is the salary which is required, then I have to go to the skill set. Right. Each job has a particular role and responsibility, which means each job will have a particular skill set which you need to have to be qualified for that particular job. Now you can go and then figure out whether I have the skill sets required for this particular job. Let me take the example of a marketing person. Now a marketing person would probably definitely need the skills of communication, uh, negotiation skills, uh, building rapport with people very easily very motivated, self-motivated, right? And then he's ready to go on the field and work a lot. Now let's say you have most of the skills. You want to develop your negotiation skills, which is something which you do not have. So one of the options could be to go online, Google it out. Today you get every single information out there. That is one way of learning. Second way of learning is probably like what we're doing right now, right? CII organizes various seminars for you. We're talking about time management. Probably another session we'll talk about negotiation skills. Or the third option is to go out there 
find out companies which is providing you training on negotiation skills and learn that particular skill. Or you can just go on and read books about it and do it. So there are different options which is available or you can even take up a part-time job while you're working right now and learn those skills. Now let's say, so these are various options which is available for you to equip yourself so that you get qualified for the particular job which you really want to. Now the goal was to get a job. Now you've broken down into various pieces like for example finding out which company Second one, finding out what is the designation and salary. Third one is finding out what is the skills required for this particular job. Fourth one is how do I ensure that I have the necessary skills so that I can get qualified into this company. So this is how you will break down your bigger goals into smaller goals. Now that, <coughs> so I'm going to give you another 30 seconds to 40 seconds. This is not a group task. This is an individual task. So you need not discuss with anybody. Just take one of your goals and then probably split them into a small manageable task. When I say task, it should not take another six months to finish that task, right? A task is something which you can complete probably in a week's time, not more than that. If it is too big, then you'll have to split that particular uh, activity into furthermore, right? So just broadly take your goal and split it into five or six tasks so that we go to the next level. I'm gonna give you 30 to 40 seconds for this particular activity. Some of you have mentioned that entrepreneurship is your goal. Uh, so if you want to be an entrepreneur, again, there are various steps, right? That's the goal. So how do you break it down into smaller pieces? One of it, you will look at what is the business which I'm really interested, really passionate about. If money is no objective, if money is no constraint, what is the business which I will do? What? Secondly, this business which I have to start, what are the various requirements in the market? Is it available? Have I done a market research for this particular product? Secondly, do I have the necessary skills to start this business? Will I get the necessary funding for this particular project? Right? There are various steps. For an entrepreneurship, yes, I agree. It cannot be just five or six. There are too many goals which you need to split and then do it. But this is just an idea for you. Right? So take this 30 seconds quickly and then once you're done, if you can just let me know, it will be great. So now I believe you guys have finished and uh, breaking your goals into manageable tasks. Great, wonderful. Now the next step that comes is now out of these 20 tasks or 15 tasks or 5 tasks which I have, how do I assign priorities? Now every task looks important, every task demands my time and every task looks like it's very urgent. So the best way to go about this particular process is you need to go through a prioritization methodology. We we'll look at that, we'll understand what is prioritization in the coming slides. We'll need to go and assign priorities to each task. We'll find out what is the most important, what is that we need to do first and then go to the next task. Right? And then next step, I'll take you to priorities in the next slide. So after priorities, what happens is you need to estimate the time required for each task. So uh, let's say for me to figure out which are the companies which is available. It's going to take probably um, like say two weeks and then to figure out what are the roles and responsibilities or the job skills which is available probably another two weeks. For me to get equipped may take another three months. So you assign or estimate the time required for each task. 
So now we are very clear of what is going to be the maximum time by which you will be able to finish and get your goal. And the last point which is the most important is set deadlines for completion of task. So any task which you take you need to have a deadline for it otherwise it doesn't make it interesting. Let's take a football match. There are players on both sides. Each of them is, the entire team is given just one ball and they are asked to hit a particular goal within the given time period. Let's say you give each one of them one ball and then you don't have a deadline and they can hit wherever they want. The game becomes not so interesting. None of us would go and watch such a match at all, right? What makes it interesting is within the given time period and the different, di different difficulties, the challenges, the various people trying uh, to ensure that you don't put a goal. If you're able to score a goal, that's what makes the game interesting. Similarly, life, there has to be challenges, there has to be difficulties, there has to be a lot of people who are helping you at the same time, a lot of people who are challenging you. And then when you overcome these and finish the goals within the set deadline, then that's what makes us even more beautiful. So these are the five stages. The first one is identifying your goals. Second is bringing your goals into manageable tasks. Third is assigning priorities to each task. Fourth is estimating time required for each task. And the last one is setting deadlines for completion of task. So we talked about priorities. Let's look at how to prioritize. So for this particular methodology, we have three things. We call it as the ABC priority station. Yeah, I know ABC, you've learned it in your LKG, right? We're going to add another complicated stuff along with that, which is prioritization. So what is ABC prioritization? If it is an A priority, right, a task is an A priority if it supports a personal or a professional long-term goal. For example, if you go to an organization, as I said earlier, the company will have certain goals and objectives for you. The goals and objectives for the company can be but every single day the activities which you will do will it be aligned to the long-term goals of the company maybe yes maybe not so at that point of time instead of just taking up every single task which comes by your way you need to analyze and understand is this task which is come up is it important to my long-term goal similarly for your personal life as well so any task which comes up you will have to first look at is it important for my long-term goal and then, for example, some tasks like um, upgrading yourself in terms of your skill set. Yes, it is required in the long term goal. Now, let's say there is a, um, a function which has been conducted in your college and then you have to be part of it. It requires, it helps you to grow your team building skills. Yes, it is very, very important. There is a tour which is coming up and you need to go there to have a lot of fun. Yes, it is important, but which one has more priority? something organizing an event which will help me build my leadership skills or a tour event which just a half day event outside with my friends. So you need to look at which is more important for me in the long run and then the one which is more important in the long run becomes a priority, a priority task. It is in support of other people you work with or you have relationship with. It is also a task which is both urgent and important. It is also uh, if you're unsure, ask yourself, what terrible thing would happen if I didn't do this task this particular day? What if this task is not completed? Will it affect my myself? Will it affect my company? Will it affect my colleagues, my immediate relations? What is the impact it will have? If it is going to be something which will have a deep impact, then that becomes an A priority task which you need to complete. Let's look at B. It is a B priority task if it is important but doesn't meet the criteria of urgency of A. That is the first thing. So with respect to urgency, it is not as urgent as A. The second thing is it is a waiting period will usually elevate B to A's or drop them to C's. For example, how much time does it require? If it has to be if it is not done today, then a B priority task might become an A priority task tomorrow or it might be a task, if I remove the time, it becomes C. So you choose, right? So anything which is not urgent as A becomes B. But this task is important, but it is not urgent as A. So this becomes B. 
Now there is a third task which is C priority. It is nice thing to do, but really not that important. Be ruthless, only give yourself A1 priority. You may have A2, A3, but only the top priorities are important and only those tasks should be given an A priority. So we have seen three things now, which is an A, B, C prioritization. A tasks are the most vital ones in your life and the most urgent ones which you need to do. If you do not complete an A task, it will have a very bad impact in your personal life, professional life as well. B task is something which is important, but not as urgent as the A task. You need to definitely do that as well. C is something which you can skip. If you do not have time for the day, you can very well skip the C task and push it to another day. Probably when you have time, you will do it. So in your goals as well, what we discussed, in the third stage, what you're doing after you have identified your goals, you've broken your goals into manageable tasks. So each of the tasks which is available, you will assign a priority term. You will give an A for certain tasks, B for certain tasks, C for certain tasks. And based on the priorities, you will start working. Focus on the A first, get that completed. If you do not know which company you're going for, or you do not know what designation you're going for, there's no point in going and accumulating a lot of skills. Because the skills which you're accumulating mean not essentially help you in the current job. So the A priority task, finish it off first. As you complete those tasks, you will get more clarity and wider knowledge about the other tasks which is going to happen in the future. Great. So now we have gone through the now we can we have gone through the first three steps of uh, prioritization. We're gonna understand how we can look at time in a very effective way. So first we need to understand where do I spend my time? Where is most of my time going? If I understand that, then it's easier for me to analyze how to spend my time. For example, if you take um, one of the audiences ask me, how can I manage my time as a financial analyst? So now, let's say you have a track of what is the time which is there and how it is being spent, then it is possible for you to split it and widen it. But you do not have a uh, idea of how your time is being spent and it becomes very, very difficult. So one of the activities which I suggest for all of you is have something like this as a time log. What is a time log? A time log is basically taking uh, every single uh, hour which is being spent. In this time log which is shown, yeah, I understand it's showing every 15 minutes, 7 to 7.15, 7.15 to 7.30, 7.30 to 7.45. I know it might be difficult for you to take and use this particular chart. But what I'm suggesting is at least you need to be aware of how you're spending your time for every single level. Let's say you get into college. As of now, I understand most of your time is spent in college. But post-college, how do you spend your time? Because that is what is most important. Anyway, you're in the college, you're spending it for learning new skills, acquiring a lot of knowledge that is being done. But post-college, what are you doing? Let's say the bus travel which you do for about, let's say, an hour, uh, hour and a half every single day, or two hours which you travel. Are you using that time productively? If you're planning to sleep that point of time, yes, good. But what about balance time? Once you come back home, are you extending your time and using the time for something very purposeful? Or the time which I'm traveling in my bus, can I use it for some good purpose? Can I form a team with the entire participants in the bus and talk about some topic, have a quiz, or talk about something innovative, or discuss an idea to help uh, the college get better or get the community better, whatever it is. So you can look at all of this and then spread these time. How am I spending each of my time? Every one hour which I have, am I just gossiping or am I talking about just movies and talking about something which is not very productive? Am I utilizing it for that particular purpose or am I using it very, very effectively? All of us remember in the beginning of the session, we discussed how if you do not manage every single hour of yours, then you're getting into a challenge. Because you have only five years left for the rest of your life to manage your life very effectively. So every single hour, even that one hour or two hour which you're using in the bus, is if you can use it very productively, it can really help. So first thing which you need to do for that particular purpose is do a time log like this. In this particular time log, if you see that person has marked his entire activities, reading, 
diction, paperwork, phone calls, consultations, meeting, inspections, travel, planning, others. I know at this point of time these are words which is not very familiar for you because it is more often used in the context of a working person. But anyways, very soon you're going to all get into a corporate, you're going to be working for someone else and this becomes a part of your life, so you need to be aware of these words. So it can also be uh, demarcated, we're using the business functions like sales, purchasing, production, finance, personal, customer relations, admin, etc, etc. Now what this particular person has done in this chart is, he's taken every single time, let's say for 8 to 8, 15 when he's entered office, he's just uh, done chatting. Then And then 8.15 to 8.30, he's been reading his uh, incoming mails. And then 8.30 to 8.45, probably he was uh, writing mails, right? And he was, uh, 8.45 to 9, he was talking phone calls. So what happens is here in this person is making a log of his time every sing, every 15 minutes. As he's making a log of his time every 15 minutes, he becomes more aware of where the time is going. And he can consciously change his efforts to make his time very, very productive. So it's the same chart which can be used for you. What I request all of you to do is leave the college time. I know you're using your college time very productively. So post your college is over, from the time your college is over till about, let's say, um, 9, 10 o'clock, I want you to have a daily log. So put a chart for yourself. Make it very simple. I don't want you to make it so complicated. Just write the time for every one hour. Let's say your college is getting over by 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. So 4 to 5, what did I do? 5 to 6, what did I do? 6 to 7, what did I do? So for every one hour, I want you to look at what is the time which you're spending. I just want you to take the last two days, for example, and then put a chart for yourself from 4 to 10, let's say, 6 hours or 7 hours, right? 4 to 11, whatever you choose to. Put a log for every hour. If you don't have a pen and paper, probably you can just uh, uh, think with yourself and then see where have you spent this time and then go through it in your mind what has happened for every one hour. Some of you might find it difficult, you don't know where the time has gone, but I request you to just take some time and think about it. So from 4 or 3, wherever your college finishes, till the time, uh, let's say 11 o'clock, how have you been spending the last two days? Just do a daily log. I'm going to give you some time for that. Okay, I believe all of you have done your time log right now. You've uh, probably written it on a piece of paper or you've discussed or you've thought to yourself what is the way you're spending your time. 
Now it is very essential for you to be aware of how you are spending your time. If you are not aware of how you spend it, then it's very difficult for you to change it also at the same point of time. Only when I know where my money is going, how am I spending my money, it is easier for me to change it and then probably put a budget for it and then rework on it so that I am able to use the money wisely. Same way, with respect to time, if you do not budget it, if you do not know where your time is going, then it's very difficult for you to plan it and also achieve your goals in the long run. So, <clears throat> the purpose of this time lock is to ensure that you keep uh, be aware of yourself, of your spending your time, every single hour you're having a track of what is going through. Now sir, do I need to do it for the rest of my life? Need not. Probably this exercise I request you to do it for at least a week's time. Right? A week's time is more than enough for us to understand your pattern and once you understand your pattern then you can be aware of where you are wasting your time, where you could be more productive and though change that particular time so that it becomes even more effective. Right? So one of the things personally if you ask my example what happened is I also understood that I am spending a lot of time in travel, uh, traveling to various places for um, programs or whatever. Now I said, my, when I looked at my time and said, how can I use this time very effectively? I have started buying a lot of all these audio CDs and started playing these audio CDs and equipping myself while I'm traveling. So anyway, most of the activities which we do doing travel is something which is an auto mode. Your brain is working automatically. It knows when to break. It knows when to ride. It knows the direction of your house. No, you're just going in an auto mode. So when you use something like an audio CD and then use it during your travel, you're not only traveling between destinations, but you are enriching yourself while you're traveling as well. So this is probably one of the options which you can do, put it on your uh, buses, have an audio CD. There are so many beautiful audio CDs available from the best of the best from the Western countries, even in a uh, lot of masters from the Indian world is also there. You can probably buy those CDs and play it every single day. So as you're traveling, you also equip yourself and enrich yourself. So this happens only when you go and analyze where you're spending your time. And then see, okay, this is one hour I have. How do I do it? How do I spend this time? Can I put it more to a, a much effective use? So when you ask, start having a time log and ask effective questions, then these things will happen. It makes your life much more useful and better. Great. So do a time log for a week at least, right? so that you are aware of where you're spending your time and then you can change it very, very effectively. Now, we're going to go into the next topic. We have uh, talked a lot about the organizing. Now we're going to look into prioritizing. Prioritizing is another important tool, right? Let's say for the, uh, the person on the screen, right? She has to write a blog, she has to meet with team, she has to tweet, add events, call prospects, identify buyers, sleep, so many things which the person has to do, right? I believe all of you are the same. You have so many tasks to do on a particular day and you don't know which one to prioritize over the other. So now we're going to look at certain methods <coughs> or tools by which we can do this prioritization very, very effectively. The first and foremost is called as Pareto's principle. Pareto principle is one of the most famous principle available across various aspects. I'll explain the principle in a minute, but this is something which is applicable in every single practical scenario. The first place where Pareto's principle was uh, discussed was in terms of wealth. The scenario is like this. 80% of the wealth in the world is with 20% of the people. Balance, 20% of the wealth in the world is with 80% of the people. Let me repeat that. 80% of the wealth in the world is with 20% of the people and balance 20% of the wealth in the world is with 80% of the people. And this is how the status is currently. Now what they figured out, let's say if I take the wealth from all the rich people and I equally distribute it to every single person in the world, they figured out over a period of three to four years, it will go back to the same status. Why is this happening? Because the top 20% people in the world are doing something very good, very effectively, very efficiently. Therefore, the money goes towards them. 
Money is all about how you treat it, how you effectively work with it. So these 20% are doing something very, very effectively. They have businesses, processes set very beautifully so that it attracts 80% of the wealth in the world. Now this 80-20 is again something which is applicable every single place. You go to an organization. 80% of the work will be completed by 20% of the people and 20% of the work will be done by 80% of the people. That is the reality. Not everybody works equally in an organization. There are a lot of things happens. Let's take your wardrobe. 20% of your dresses you wear 80% of your time and balance 80% of the dresses you wear only 20% of the time. Probably the same 10-15 dresses you keep wearing it again and again and there are 80% dresses which is waiting in your wardrobe to be worn very 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 rarely. So this 80-20 you can apply it to anywhere and it really really works. The same way it can be applied to your time management as well. In time management 80% of the work which you give, do will give you 20% results and 20% of the work you do will give you 80% of the results. Let me repeat that. 80% of the work you do gives you 20% results. 20% of the work you do gives you 80% of the results. Now I'm going to ask you a very challenging question. Which one will you focus on? The 20% which gives you 80% productivity or the 80% which gives you 20% productivity? Yes, can I have your answers please? Yes, that's the right answer, right? So you need to focus on the 20% which gives you 80% productivity. Now every single day, there are so many tasks that you do. So now you need to look at and say, which is this 20% which will give me 80% productivity, right? I've given you another slide now where you see 80% of the time, where you do many trivial tasks will give you only 20% results. There are but there are few vital tasks which is taking 20% of your time but it can give you 80% of the results. Now if you have done a time log for yourself and you have done a daily log and you have enlisted all the activities which you are doing from let's say uh, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. then you can from that list understand is that activity part of my 20% or my 80%. If there are too many tasks which you're doing which is part of your 80%, then ideally it doesn't make sense. If you're doing tasks which is part of your 20% most of the time, then you're achieving larger results. Like I said, you can take the example of uh, the goals which you've set. And am I utilizing my time for gossiping or calling my friend, going out with my friends or watching just TV right, or playing video games? These are trivial tasks which not one, they're not directly connected to the long-term long objectives. I'm not saying you should not do them. You should definitely do them. They should be part of your life. You need to enjoy your life. Absolutely. But how much percentage of the time they should take. So there are a few vital tasks, which is most important, which is finding out which is the companies which will give me a job or which is the subject I need to study in depth. Or what is the subject which I really love to do and I want to go beyond my books, which my college prescribes. Can I learn, become an expert, become a master in this particular subject? So this is something which can help you in the long run, at the same time give you maximum results. So focus on these 20% activities which can give you 80% results, which is what will make a huge difference between you and any other person. This is what is going to differentiate the way you use your time and how anybody else uses their time. You, you make a call, do you want the, to be part of the people who are the top 20% in the world who have 80% of the wealth or you want to be amongst the 80% who is just having a big fight for the 20% wealth in the world. Both of these are very connected because these people have understood how to use their time very, very effectively 
and they are having businesses and processes set very beautifully so that they are able to make the time and also the money which they want in their life. So this is something which all of us understand. So you need to be aware that 20% of your time you need to focus which gives you 80% percent. Great. So again I want you to uh, take a minute, go through your daily log or go through your mind. What is 20%? With respect to me, what is the 20% work which I can do which will give me the maximum result, right? Pick a few tasks, probably run it through your mind. Four or five tasks or five tasks which you need to definitely do every single day so that I get the maximum productivity. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for it. Please take the time to discuss and then we connect again. Great. So I believe by now we have uh, identified the 20% task which you need to do every single day which will give you the maximum productivity. Wonderful. This is when you need to focus on. This is where every single day you need to do. Right. So we looked at new, two types of prioritization. One prioritization is your ABC method which we saw. And the second prioritization is the uh, focus on this 20% which is giving you the 80% results. Now if you focus on these two then predominantly you are very much managing your time very, very effectively. So this is what the top people in the industry do. This is how they manage their time. So even if you do the same, then it is going to be very, very effective for you. Great. So this is a slide for you to just have a look and understand. Change your priorities and change your life. If you change your priorities, if you know what is the most important thing which you need to do and if you start working on that, then you can change your entire life as well. Now, I'm going to show you a small video. Um, yes, there might be a slight lag in terms of the volume or the uh, video as such. But it is a very crucial video. I believe this video can bring in a lot of uh, understanding about time management. So I'm going to play it now and uh, I want you to just uh, focus on this video. Probably if your volumes are not turned on, please turn them up so that everybody is able to hear. And then let's go through this particular video and uh, understand it. And in the end of the video, I will again come back and we will discuss more furthermore on this particular video. So I'm going to play it for you right now. Do you ever feel like you get bogged down in the thick of thin things? <laughs> well, that might be analogous to all these little, small things that tend to fill our life. And they're just little by little, they just accumulate. 
no. Their job, you can't go above this, is to get all those large rocks in the jar. Good luck. <laughs> I'll describe each rocks as she puts them in. What's that one called? Q2. Planning, preparation. Right. Planning, preparation, prevention, and empowerment. Q2. That which is not urgent but important. All right. Can I put this down? Sure. <laughs> The next rock she's putting in there is called relationships and family. She's trying to make it so she can get them all in there on the assumption that by moving the other ones around, it makes more space. Look at that third rock you put in there. That's employment, some key employment issue, and then you put major projects here. Yeah, that's fair. In this particular video, as it is getting played, there are different stones which is being entered into the basket. Now, I want you to also focus on what is the various stones, right? Like, for example, family and relationships, planning, so they are also mentioning the rocks which they are being putting inside. So just also focus on what is the rock which is going in so that you understand the concept very clearly. That's called service, community, church. <laughs> Do you ever feel like this? Yes. <laughs> How many feel like this? <laughs> You're a hands-on person. She just put down the sharpen the saw. <laughs> How many frequently do that? I just don't have time today to sharpen the saw. You ever been too busy driving to take time to get gas? It's almost. Wow, it's good. You know, if it doesn't fit, force it. Well, no. You can neglect a big opportunity no. if you want. No. <laughs> Here's something that's called urgent and important. It's quadrant one thing that is blindsiding you that uh, it's your biggest client that if you don't get back to that client now, <laughs> You've given up your vacation. I'll tell you what you can do if you want to. You can work out of a different paradigm altogether. You can do anything you want. If I can use that in my head. That's what anything, saying. yeah. Well, then I'd rather put these on the bottom. And then for a little pebble bar. Thank you. Okay, she has sharpening the saw, planning, preparation, spouse, spouse, vacation, employment, big opportunity, big opportunity, important and urgent, block of time. Young children keep looking at me. Glad <laughs> my husband's not here. <laughs> no, I don't leave them there. Okay.
change in post, right? Right. This is an interesting video with respect to the time management uh, paradigm is concerned. If you've clearly noticed what happened in this video, in the initial task, there was all the trivial activities, right, which we talked about, the 80% of the task. The 80% of the task was already filled in that particular bucket, and then she was given the opportunity to put in the most important task, which is the 20% of the task. She did try that. She put in a lot of effort and she was not able to fit in most of the task which is very important. This is something which pretty much happens with most of us where we fit in the bucket with most of the trivial task which is 80% and we feel as though the bucket is already filled and then we try to focus on the most trivial things which is the 20% but do not have the time to complete it. Now the same task was operated from a different paradigm. This time what was happening, she just put in all the 20%, the most important rocks first and after she did that, she started focusing on the trivial things. Now if you have noticed, there was enough space for both activities actually. So the video clearly shows to all of us that how if we finish off the 20% which is the most important tasks, then it becomes easier for us to focus on the smaller things which is the trivial things in life, right? So hope I, this video was something which was enriching, which was giving you a lot of idea and you were able to see it with good quality and audio as well, right? So now we're going to go to the next stage, we can go into the four quadrants. This is a pretty big concept, um, yes, it requires a half a day by itself, but I'm going to give you the most uh, the important points in this so that it becomes easier for you to understand it and then you can go properly Google it out later and understand and learn about it in the future. So there are four quadrants. Every single task or activity which we do every single day is part of these four quadrants. The task which you do can be qualified into important or urgent, important not urgent, not important urgent or not important not urgent. So Q1 is basically important urgent, Q4 is basically not important, not urgent. Now any single task which you do is part of these four quadrants. Let's say quadrant one. What are the typical activities which come in a quadrant one? I'm going to give you more examples both in respect to college as well as for the corporate world as well. Q1 is basically studying every single day, attending your classes every single day, any report or MIS which you need to submit um, today, all this becomes very important and urgent. In a company, basically reading mails, replying to boss's mail, or taking care of the customer who just walked in, all becomes important and urgent. What is not important and urgent? Quadrant three. Any task which is not important to you, but it has been given to you. Let's say an ass assignment which your teacher gives you, which you think it's not important, but the teacher says you have to submit it by today, then it becomes urgent. Typically, it happens in the corporate world as well. Boss asks for an MIS, for a report, or ask you to go and visit a particular customer today and give a report. Might not be important for you. It is important for him, but not for you. But it is very urgent. I cannot avoid that particular task. I need to complete it. The fourth quadrant is something which you're very, very familiar with which is not important, not urgent, right? Things like Facebook, WhatsApp, browsing through the night on the internet, or gossiping with friends, chatting, all this comes part of it. I'm not saying it has to be totally eradicated, but there's a percentage which has to be restricted to, right? Of your, when you're budgeting your time, you need to ensure that the, this quadrant four doesn't go beyond your budgeted time. Now the focus area is the quadrant two, which is important, 
and not urgent. What are the tasks which is important but not urgent? Let's say you have a telephone bill. Beginning of the month, the bill comes to you. You you say uh, there's an X amount of money, let's say 1000 bucks, which needs to be paid. And the date by which you need to pay it is 20th. So as on date, the task is important. I need to pay the bill. But is it urgent? 20 more days is there, sir. Why should we pay it today? Now 10th comes. Again, the task is important. But there's no urgency. 10 more days, right? And then two days is the 20th. What happens? The task suddenly becomes important and urgent. If we don't pay it, then I will not be allowed to make any further calls. Typically, something which happens during your exam periods, right? 15 more days is there to study, right? Why should I study now? It is important, yes. But is it urgent? 15 more days is there. And then we keep going on and on until the last day comes and then I have to study so many subjects the same night in order to finish for the next day. Now this important not urgent is a box or a quadrant where we are not focusing most of our time. In the long run, if you really want to be successful, if you want to reach great heights, this is the quadrant we need to focus. This is a quadrant where you will be spending time on planning, scheduling, building relationships, growing your knowledge, etc, etc. So let me give you a sample of all activities which is there. So Q1 is all firefighting, crisis, pressing problems, deadline driven projects, right? Q2, this is the place where we need to focus on. It is quality time. It is productive time. It is proactive time. It is about prevention, capability improvement, relationship building, recognizing new opportunities, planning and recreation. The third quadrant is distractions, interruptions, some calls, mails, reports, meetings, etc, etc. The quadrant three is something which you need to try and delegate it to somebody else. If you don't have anybody below you, sir, I'm just joining a company, how can I delegate it to somebody else? Let's say there is a colleague of yours. The task requires you to do some work in Excel. Let's say it is advanced Excel skills which is required. You might not be having the capabilities to do it. So you and him make a deal saying, well, my dear friend, you help me with this Excel work. This is something which might take three, four hours for me to complete. And it is important. My boss is asking for this report. If you help me in finishing this task as early as possible, then I will help you, help you in some of the tasks. So you make a deal with him, delegate this job to a friend who's good at it. Therefore, it saves a lot of time for you. At the same time, be prepared to help him when he requires some help. The quadrant four is basically the time wasting, trivia, some mail, phone calls, pleasant activities. Now the quadrant four is currently taking a lot of our time, especially for youngsters. There are too many distractions which is available today. So you need to ensure that you have fun. At the same point of time, are you having too much fun? That is a question which you need to ask yourself and see how you can align yourself to other three quadrants. So already of doing Q1, I want you to focus on Q2. Q2 where is the growth is, that is where being proactive and you can learn in the long run. So currently 50 to 60 percent of your time is spending in Q1, 5 percent probably in Q2 because somebody else is forcing you to do it and Q2 is 15 to 20 percent, Q4 is 10 to 20. In terms of college students, I would rate Q1, Q4, probably 20 to 40 percent. So you are the judge, you need to look at it. So what is the best way? The best way is Q1, 35 percent of your time, Q2, 30 percent of your time, Q3, 25 percent of your time, and Q4, 10 percent of your time. If you can maintain this, Right? Look at all your activities, put your daily logs and see where your time is going, where you're spending your time and then plan it and then realign it, budget it to this particular quadrant, then you will become even more productive and it will really, really help you when achieving all your goals and dreams. Now, if you have to show it via a pictorial representation, important urgent is something which is necessity, right? which has to be done. It is what is producing you the immediate results. Q3 
is deception, Q4 is a waste of time, Q2 is the quality time, right? That is where the focus has to be. So you can learn more about it. There are enough books which is available out there. You can Google around various topics to understand the quadrants. Right? This is again a concept by Stephen Covey, who has written the seven habits of highly effective people. If you go through this, you will be able to understand much more in detail. Right? I request you to do that further studying on your own. Right. So we are going to the next aspect, which is the scheduling. Scheduling as in is a very important thing. We're going to look at some few tools, how to schedule your time very, very effectively. So one of the things is to do put a to-do list. What is a to-do list? The to-do list is a simple method of writing down all the activities which you need to do on any single day. You might have so many things running in your mind. It is very difficult for you to remember them, one. Secondly, prioritize them in your mind itself. And everything looks important when it is there in your mind. So the best way to do it, take a piece of paper and write down all the activities which you need to do. Right? So while you're writing down, you can just write down the list and then do a prioritization, A, B, C, or like the way it is shown on your screen, you can split it into three categories, which is must do, should do, and want to do, or good to do. So as you write them, when you put it into a must do, should do, and want to do, again, you are very clear. What is the things which I need to do by today? What are the things, if possibility, I can finish it off? And the last one, if I do not have time, then I'll postpone this particular task to the next level. I'm just going to give you a 30 seconds now to just write down a to-do list. If you have a piece of paper, please take the time and write it down. A small to-do list, 10 to 15 tasks which you need to complete. If you do not have the piece of paper, then I suggest there is no choice, but you write it in your mind of what are the to-do tasks which you have for the rest of the day, for example. 30 seconds, please do it. I hope you've done your to-do list right now. So you are put down all the things which is running in your mind. It made your life much more easier. So you've uh, written down whatever thoughts which you have in your mind and then you have sorted out. So once your to-do list is over, it becomes much more easier for you. You need very have a clear understanding of what are the top tasks which you have and where you need to focus. So it, it is easier for you to now prioritize it and schedule it properly. Great. So now we're going into the next stage, one of the other tools which is available, which is going to be the daily organizer. The daily organizer is a pretty simple tool which is there, which helps you to again analyze how you're spending your time. For example, uh, in the screen, if you see what is being displayed, there is something which helps you to do a to-do list. It also has an appointment sheet where you can write down the appointments which you have. The work projects which you have, that can be written down. You can mark the calendar. You can put out what is the due things which you have. There are different uh, daily organizers which is available in the market. You can just have a look at them, choose what is best for you, and then have it. So this is something which you can have in your uh, book, or you can have it part of your you know, wall. You can stick it out at your home and then make it. So you can again ask me. It depends on how you're using your time. If you use your time very effectively, it's much more easier to put a to-do list. Let's say if your goals are listed out very clearly, then it makes it easier for you to it makes it easier for you to 
put a to-do list. If your goals are not very clear, if you do not have a proper planning, then it becomes difficult for you to put a to-do list. The next thing which we need to work on is procrastination. What is procrastination? We tend to move away certain tasks again and again and then we keep on pushing this task to be completed for a later period of time. We always uh, tend not to do this particular task as a priority focus. So I'm going to give you some t tools and tips to help you to get the procrastination task away from your list. What are we going to do? We're going to do, uh, let's, let's understand how procrastination happens quickly and then we will see how to run a bit. First is over planning. There's so much of over planning which we do. We are not focusing um, on finishing the task. We want to get it perfectly done. So there is so much of time which is taken in planning. Therefore, the task gets delayed. The second reason is perfectionism that we are looking at perfecting things. If I do it, it has to be perfect, right? So you, you take a lot of time to make it perfect. Therefore, there is procrastination. There could be other reasons like boredom. I'm not interested. I'm not, I don't want to do this task. Why am I asked to do this particular project? I'm not really keen on doing this project. So I just push it, push it, push it till the last date until it becomes very, very difficult. Deadline high. Some of us might feel happy or get the excitement of doing task at the last. So therefore, we wait till the last minute and then the deadline high kicks in. Then you want to finish this task and you feel excited about finishing it. The last one could be complexity. The task itself is very complex. It's very difficult for me to do it. Whenever I focus on it, it makes me very um, um, uh, defocused. I'm not able to do it. Therefore, complexity is one more issue. So the la how are we going to do it? How are we going to overcome procrastination? What are the solutions which we have to overcome so procrastination? The first one is to create a start point. where Somewhere we need to start. This is a task which I need to do. If we do not start it, how can I complete it? So the best way is to start it somewhere. So how do I start it? How do I set up motivation? I'm going to give you a dash technique. What is this dash technique? There are three types of dashes which you will do. The first one is a time dash. For example, if there is a task which I do not want to do, I will set up a time dash, which is let's say I will take up five minutes. I will say for the next five minutes, I will just focus on this particular task. I will not do anything else. I will switch off my mobile or put it on silent mode and put it very far away. I'll move away my computer. I'll switch off all the stations which is available. And for the next five minutes, I will only focus on my time. On that particular time, whatever is the task I need to do, I will focus on that. So once I finish it, finished off this five minutes, and then I will move towards anything else, the next task which has to be done. So that is what is called as time dash. So I set myself five minutes to do a particular task. Within that five minutes, I only focus on that particular task. And once that is over, then I move to the next task. Probably you can take a break for every five minutes. Every five minutes, once you've finished it, take a break, move away from that place. The second dash which is there, which is a unit dash. What is a unit dash? A unit dash is something like, let's say you have to write down uh, notes. So you say that once I finish off one page, I will take a break, right? So you're doing this assignment, you finish off one page, and then once you finish that one page, you will move away from that place. But until you finish that one page, you will not move away from that place. That is what is called as a unit dash. So you focus your time on getting one unit at least completed. The third dash is a combined dash. Either you can set a timeline for five minutes or you set a unit of one page. So whatever you finish first, if your five minutes is over, you know, you will move away from that place or if you finish off one page, you will move away from that place. So what I'm basically doing it is I'm having small, small dashes to complete the procrastination task. Instead of just procrastinating it forever, in a day, I set a time for five minutes and finish it, take a break, come back five minutes and take a break, either that way or do a combined dash so that I'm able to progress faster in that particular task. So that I don't feel I'm spending too much time on a thing which I do not want, rather I sp uh, fix specific time and finish the task within that period of time. Great, so this is another beautiful way by which we can remove off procrastination 
this will help us to achieve or overcome the task which we are procrastinating for a longer period of time. Now, this is something which is very, very crucial, which is interruptions for college students. Now, the gadgets which have come in our life is is only spoiling us, it's only distracting us, creating so much of interruptions in our life that we're not able to focus on a particular task. Would If you have seen the time an average person is able to focus on a particular task, it is reducing day by day. If you can take a guess and then tell me how much time are you able to focus on a particular task continuously? How much time are you able to focus on a particular task continuously? It could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, yes, 25. Actually, if you see, our focus on a particular task has gone down to the level of a goldfish. We are able to focus on task to the level of a goldfish, which is about 8 seconds. Because there are so many distractions which is available, you get easily distracted. Let's say a mobile phone, right? The WhatsApp line keeps going on, and then you're distracted. You want to immediately go and check. Is Narendra Modi getting in touch with me? Is Barack Obama wants to have a chat with me, right? There's something which is important, and you want to go and check it immediately, and it really, really distracts your time. And you know that it is not an important message, and you think about why is this guy is messaging me this, and then from there you go on to analyze so many other things. It just, the mind gets moving from one thing to the or the other, right? During this entire speech, I don't know how many times you guys are totally focused here. I know so many things that have gone through your minds and you are distracted. So let's go at a few techniques and understand how we can be focused and how we can ensure that these distractions are uh, reduced to a large extent. Yeah, as we discussed, um, there are so many things, right? WhatsApp, Google, Facebook, whatnot. Everything helps, takes a lot of our time. So you need to understand what is your prime time. If you understand your prime time, it is easier for you to work around it. What is prime time? Prime time is the time where I am most effective about my work. For students, it can be something which is at the beginning of the morning. Early morning, you wake up, that is where you're most productive, or it could be in the late nights where you're most productive, or during your college hours where you're most productive. Figure out what is your most productive hour during that point of time. Ensure there are as much less as distractions as possible and focus the most important task during that prime time. This is one very effective way to ensure that you remove away distractions. The second one is handling interruptions. Whenever someone comes and asks you, right, let's go for a coffee break, let's go for um, uh, just this five minutes discussion and then come back. I know these interruptions will you know, become 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour or so. So use this technique called PACE, which is pause, ask, choose, and engage. Pause from what you're doing, ask what the person wants, choose whether you want to engage or not, and then make a conscious call. Instead of just going with what they are asking you to do, use this small technique called PACE. You can have a, a board like this, which is can call it as a do not disturb. In, in, the, in the laptops it is coming, so you can put up a small board which says do not disturb. One or two times the people will come and disturb you, they will not understand it. But if you make it very clear for them that this is a prime time, I am doing my task, I don't want to be disturbed, then probably people will understand and allow you the space to do so. Now, again Stephen Covey clearly says, 10% is what really happens, 90% is how you decide to take it forward. So I'm going to ask you to focus on the 90%. 10% is the things which happens in your life. 90% is how you react to it. So if you clearly focus on the 10% and see how you're reacting, most of your times can be taken care of. The last slide which, before which I want to finish off is your potential. Right? All of us have great potential. All of us have great capabilities. We always underestimate our time 
we always underestimate our potential. Whatever you believe is your potential, you are much more capable than that. You can achieve much more in your life than what is that which you set as your potential. So have great potentials, set great potentials for yourself that will help you to achieve much more in life and reach much bigger places in life. With that, I'm going to finish off the session. I'm going to open it up for discussions. Um, allow you to ask your questions if you have any and I will be more than happy to answer any of the questions which you have with respect to time management. The floor is open. Please feel free to ask your questions. I'm here to answer them. One other person is asked saying, uh, are there any case studies for this planning and management? There are many case studies which is available. Um, yes, it is slightly difficult to discuss it over uh, a video conference, but you can definitely uh, get in touch with us. We will try to send it across or you can Google it out. There are a lot of case studies which is available on planning and time management. Yes, uh, any other questions? What about Mr. Ganesh Kumar, V. Kumar, Sendil Murgan, Puma, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to give you answers. So one of the person is asking me a question. <clears throat> so how can MBA students effectively utilize their time during class hours? Well, the best way to utilize your time during class hours is to listen to the class. Right? It might look very simple. But I'm saying when you capture what's happening during the class hours, right? there are two things which you can learn. Is every concept being covered in detail, yes or no? Is there something which is really interesting which is happening in today's class? If it is something which is very interesting, then I can go back further and understand it, analyze it, further learn about it in detail. If something which is happening today is not of interest to me, but still I will listen to it, but I will ensure when I pick up a job opportunity in the future, 
I am choosing something which is definitely on those, not on those lines. So whatever happens, wherever you want to progress in your life, it is very important that you give your 100% to what is happening right now. Otherwise, you will just miss the opportunities which is there lying in front of you. But every single time you give your 100% to what is happening right now, because I can't be anywhere else apart from the class. My mind might move away, but I do not have an option. So I'm anyways there in the class, like the way you are right now. You are there in the seminar. The best way you can utilize this time is to give you 100% right now, so that tomorrow you can probably use it in the best effective way. So be attentive in the class, listen to what's happening, try to make it as a conversation, ask many questions as possible. See if that subject is interesting to you. If it is, go in that particular line. If it is not, then probably in the future you will choose something which is not, uh, try to avoid yourself from choosing that particular line. Right, one more question which I have is, please explain 90% of how we focus and 10% how we react. Let's give me a story, right? Uh, let's say you, um, this is a story of uh, how a father and a child and uh, the mother was. They, uh, while they were, the father and the children are having the breakfast, the child by mistake um, spills the coffee over the father. The father gets really, really angry. The father gets really, really angry and the father uh, starts reacting. So, uh, the father gets really angry and then he shouts at the child and then says, what have you done? I have to go for this meeting and this is not the way you, you need to react. I'm going to go and change my dress. You better finish your food before I come back. The father goes very angry to, uh, to the wardrobe, takes another dress, he makes the change and he comes down. The kid is really crying now because he has shouted left, right, center, right? So what he does is uh, he shouts at the kid and then they get along and they start moving forward. He, while while he's driving, since he's very late and he's agitated, he drives very fast. And as he's driving very fast, the police actually catches him and he asks him to pay a lot of fine. He pays the fine, drops the child at his school, and then he goes to his office. By this time, he's totally agitated. And his boss shouts at him. And the entire day doesn't go as per plan. And the evening he comes back, he finds that his family is not very um, uh, receiving him properly because they are angry with what he spoke in the morning. So here, the 10%, which is the coffee being spilt in his shirt, that is the 10%. The balance 90% is how he reacted. Now let's take another example. The same scenario, the father goes, the child has actually spilled the coffee on the father. The father says, okay, fine, it's okay, it has happened. Uh, tells the child, you please have your foot, please complete it before I come back. He goes, has the, uh, does the address uh, change, comes back, takes the child, moves forward. Now the winter day, the way he has approached it will be totally different. So 10% is what is happening to you, 90% is how you're reacting back. So you have a choice. Every single time when something happens to you, how do you react to it? Based on the way you react, you control your time as well. So that is what the 10% and the 90% is. Another question which we have is, how can we manage time if we are interrupted by unplanned job? That is part and parcel of life. There will always be tasks which will come, which is urgent, which is not important, and you will have to complete it. Let's say you're uh, doing your work and uh, suddenly your boss comes in and says, this work has to be done. You have not planned it, you have to do it. When you manage your time very effectively over a period of time, if 35% of your task is in the quadrant one, which is important and urgent, then, and your 30% you're spending time on the quadrant two, which is important and not urgent, and the quadrants are managing properly, over a period of time, you will have time left out to take care of the unplanned job which comes in. But if you're not managing your time, you're not budgeting your time, you don't have any schedules, you don't have any prioritization tools, then obviously, suddenly one important task comes in, your entire schedule becomes haywire. So all that we discussed for the last one and a half hours, 
if you're able to do it right from planning, organizing, scheduling, then it will be easier for you to take up any task which comes unplanned as well. So the best way to tackle it is follow what we discussed from morning. Are there any more questions anybody else would like to ask? I'd be more than happy to answer. I know there are there have certain limitations in a webinar. There are certain things which we can do, which we cannot do. Uh, I hope uh, uh, whatever the best uh, possible we have done that. And I believe that all of you have learned this concept. I'm wishing you all the very best for the rest of your life. Utilize this concept. Make the best possible out of your current life. Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Booma and then she